All right, it's been a little while since we did an update on the GameCube collection that I'm trying to complete now, and a lot of that's because you pretty much have to go on eBay at this point. I haven't had a lot of conventions to go out to and just pick up some games in bulk, even for some of the cheaper ones, but I have been accumulating over time here, and I figured we would go over some of the pickups that I've had here, and I think I think I actually managed to complete uh, a semi-rare set on the GameCube, which we'll take a look at here as well. Guys, if you enjoyed these videos, make sure that like button helps out a ton. And if new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below. And to start, I will be checking out this Prism HD adapter while we're going through this. This was sent over by Castlemania Games, and I figured we would check it out here with some of these games. I'll put some footage up on screen for some of them as we're going through the some of the pickups here. So if you're curious about this adapter, just check out the gameplay footage in this video. This is similar to like that Eon adapter. It's another good option. It's from Retrobit and it plugs in to that digital port on the back of your GameCube. Now I do wanna start with an honorable mention because I did tell you guys I would try to pick this one up. It's not a GameCube game, um, but it is a game that I had been looking for. And since the PlayStation 3 games had fallen in price after Sony said, Said that they were going to leave the shop open, I went ahead and just picked it up right away, and that is 3D Dot Game Hero. So very happy to grab this one after it fell in price a bit to, I think, a more reasonable value. It is a really fun game, but it's also a bit harder to find. Anyway, let's move on to the GameCube games because I do go through the comments and from time to time we'll pick some out and actually go out looking for them based on your suggestions. And there was one that I found at a local store actually around here, which was surprising, and that is Teen Titans. Now, I have watched the show, but I didn't actually play this back in the day and looking like on the back, it looks pretty fun as one to four players simultaneous. And I posted this one up with kind of the lot of games that I had accumulated. And many of you pointed this one out as being a really fun game to check out. So I will be doing that. Uh, it is complete with the manual in pretty good shape overall. The disc doesn't have any scratches or anything. And then I also have Medal of Honor European Assault and Tarzan Untamed. Now the rest of the games are all ones that I went online on eBay to pick up. It's starting with WarioWare Inc. And I never owned this game. I remember renting it back in the day and it's like a party game kind of thing. So it works well if you're having friends over like for the weekend, for example, and you maybe want something everyone can kind of hang out and play. And it is a lot of fun. I'm not the biggest WarioWare fan. Like I didn't really play all of the different games. Like I said, I rented this one and then I remember owning the Game Boy Advanced WarioWare game. This one though did start to climb in price pretty quickly. So I did pick it up for the collection. Now I also went ahead and picked up a lot of games and I'll tend to do that if it looks like most of the games in the lot I don't have because generally you can get a lot of commons and of course the shipping then is much better if you try to get them all at once rather than individually. So I do have a couple of those here with Enter the Matrix and I remember this game quite a bit actually back in the day because when this came out it was really hyped up as you know being part of, of the lore and it had like its own uh, exclusive film footage from the creators of the Matrix trilogy and it just it wasn't a very good game. I think a lot of us were really hyped on it because of the Matrix at the time, obviously, uh, but Path of Neo was much better than this game. I actually enjoyed Path of Neo quite a bit. Unfortunately though, End of the Matrix, not so much. This, however, is a dual disc game here. It did come complete with the manual and looks like they even included some cheat codes for me. So that, that's really nice. The, the manual's not in the best shape overall, but it's Enter the Matrix, so I'm not really sweating it too much. Then we have Curious George, complete with the, the free movie ticket inside. That's, that's something they would do quite a bit back then, I remember. They would package in movie tickets with a bunch of games with, they would have like movie tie-ins like, oh, there we go. Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, free inside one child's movie ticket. Like this, that was a common practice uh, back then. And then we have Call of Duty 2 Big Red 1. This is actually the time that we didn't have multiplayer Call of Duty much. This, for example, was a one player game. Now they did have some multiplayer Call of Duty games at this time, but we would also get ones like these where it was just all single player campaign. I remember enjoying Big Red 1 
quite a bit back then, but it's certainly a bit different than what Call of Duty is now. And then we have the Sonic Mega Collection, the player's choice version here, and there are just a bunch of old Sonic games compiled here on the disc. Just a nice collection. I believe I already have this one. I don't know if it's the player's choice version, but that's what happens when you buy lots of games. At times, you'll end up with a second copy of a game that you already have. And then we have GoldenEye Rogue Agent, which was pretty much EA's attempt at capitalizing on the GoldenEye name again. This is another dual disc GameCube game here. Manual looks to be in good shape. And I remember when this game came out, I just, I didn't really get into it. It had one to four players, so you could like play against each other. And I remember they did pump up the AI in the game, even saying enemies controlled by the all new evil, E-V-I-L, AI, mean no two games are ever the same. Oh, here's a good one. Do you remember Blood Rain? I think I had played this at a friend's house, but I never owned this game here on the GameCube. And I'm trying to remember what system I played it on. Was it the, it might've been on the PlayStation 2, uh, but I saw this online. It wasn't an expensive game or anything. And I figured, hey, might as well go ahead and pick this one up. But I do remember it had like slow-mo and yeah, here it is. Use slow-mo zoom and aura visions and you would battle Nazis, mutants, swamp creatures and ancient parasitic monsters. Also, strangely enough up here, it says one player, but it shows all four controllers being used. And I don't remember if this game had multiplayer. It doesn't say anything about it in the manual, so it's just a misprint on the back. And then we have some classics here, which includes the original Ikaruga. This is a game that's been moved up to a bunch of platforms now, which includes like the Switch and uh, the PlayStation 4. But back in the day, you had it on like the Dreamcast and the GameCube, and it's an awesome arcade game to pick up. Uh, this one is complete with the manual and the disc, which looks pretty good overall. This is another one that has been climbing in price steadily on the GameCube. So certainly one you wanna pick up as soon as you can. And then we have Splinter Cell Pandora Tomorrow, another awesome title to pick up here. This one has the manual and the disc looks pretty good there too. And then of course, the original Splinter Cell. I already have Chaos Theory, so I just wanted to make sure I had everything finished up and complete. And I remember when Splinter Cell first came out, it like really set the tone for visuals this generation, not just like on the GameCube, but also even on like the PS2. And when Chaos Theory came out on the original Xbox, it legitimately looked like a next gen leap, even though it was still on the same system with that original Xbox. And a lot of that had to do with like the bump mapping and stuff they were able to accomplish there um, with the Xbox. But it still looked really good on the GameCube. And this one even is Game Boy Advance compatible. I never used that at the time um, with this original Splinter Cell game, so if you know what that was about, let me know in the comments. And of course, I saved the best for last, that being Mario Party 6 and Mario Party 5. Now, of course, I had to try to get all the Mario Parties because they are becoming increasingly rare as we've gone along here. These are two that I managed to pick up online, and the generally, I'll, I tend to try to stick to in-person pickups for these, so like at conventions. They look pretty good online, and I'm happy to say that after they arrived, I went through them and, and they look very good in person as well. And that means that I have now completed the Mario Party set on the GameCube, which is something I wanted to do because these are becoming increasingly harder to find on the GameCube. And I mean, they're a blast to play. I know people have their favorites out of this set here. I really enjoy four. I posted up an image of five a little bit ago when I picked it up and I opened it to check it out and people were like, oh, that one's my favorite. No, 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 six is better, seven's the best. So everyone at least has their opinions as to which one is their favorite Mario Party on the GameCube, but I think this is like my favorite generation of Mario Party games. I know on the 64 it was a lot of fun and we have a lot of nostalgia for it, but something about the clean visuals, but still having the option of sticking with the basics with something like four and five or going up to getting uh, the microphone involved and other weird things they did with it. There's just something about this generation of Mario Party that was really fun. And I know we have Mario Party superstars coming up here pretty soon, which takes a lot of N64 boards 
and mini games, and they're remaking those for the Switch. But I hope they have plans to do something with four, five, six, and seven, because I think there are some very iconic boards and mini games here that they could certainly turn into its own game on the Switch, or who knows, maybe off into like the Switch 2 or something. And guys, that's gonna do it here for these GameCube pickups, just an update around the collection. I haven't really been buying a lot of the lower end titles necessarily. I've been waiting to go to a convention and just try to pick up a lot of them in bulk, so I don't have to worry about shipping or, or any of that. And hopefully that's something I can do here pretty soon as I am starting to look at different conventions that are coming up in the next uh, few months. So if I can do that, I should be able to grow the collection pretty quickly. Yes, with smaller, cheaper titles, but still you have to get them to complete the collection. But let me know what you guys thought about some of these pickups here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.